Okay, here we go. All right. Limits and demonstrations. I'm looking forward to this. Let's see how it goes. Museum indeed. Limits and demonstrations. Alula Chamberlain retrospective. Marking the first major public showcase of her work in over 20 years, this retrospective exhibition of work by pioneering installation artist Lula Chamberlain comprises a diagonal slice through time, place, and form. The pieces on display here were individually debuted over a period of 35 years, designed in Chamberlain's various homes and studios between her beloved Mexico City and her native Elizabethtown. They represent a range of scale and impact from the intimate warmth of vertex <laughs> texture fetch. I'm going to try that again. Vertex texture fetch. To the infamous visage, the latter of which requires a vertical clearance of over 30 feet. Yet these works share a confounding legacy. In each of their debut exhibitions, they were nearly impossible to install. Galleries and museums balked at the scale, power requirements, and highly skilled labor involved in maintaining these works for display. Some of their debuts collapsed under the weight of logistics only to be successfully executed much later. And so, just as they describe the outer limits of Chamberlain's range as an installation artist, the geographical edges and vertices of her itinerant home life, and the beginning and end of her distinguished career, the works on display here also trace the extremes of our capabilities and the frontiers of our patience as both viewers and exhibitors. <laughs> So it's an exhibit of failure, I suppose. Are we capable of viewing these works as they were meant to be viewed? Do we even want to be? Failures of reality crashing into what we hope to achieve. Oh. So they're walking with me? Title card. Spin coin suspended, correcting for angle and motion. 1976. Found materials. Didn't you have one of these? Oh yeah, I did have an old microphone reader like this. I got it at a garage sale. Couldn't figure out what to do with it. That's my whole shed. Just a bunch of weird, obsolete electronics I thought I might use. Someday. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe I'll just sell them for scrap when the price of lead and plastic goes up. I guess everything gets broken down eventually. Whew. I gotta say, I did not love that noise. Vertex Extra Fetch. Free television and suspended cathode ray tube. 1968, John Kings. Hmm. TV. What is that? It's a lighthouse? No, it's a weather vane or a window or something. Is it a lighthouse? So if that's the intimate one... V. 
Visage, 1984, Unknown Media. What was that made of? It's a mystery. It looks like ribbon? Bandages? Oh, have you seen the Invisible Man? It's slice a visage to build a visage. A puzzle to its owner. What? It's a poem I read. I think it was written by a computer. Oh, uh, maybe it's Raptor. The... It's like one of the first poem generator program things. I think it's lovely. Huh. I'm trying to parse the face. I mean, there are the eyes. Are they bearded? Sort of a stern, paternal looking face. That's the best I can guess. like the face of someone who would come down from a mountain and say they found a couple more commandments. Hmm. Uh-oh. Did I press too far? Oh. Overdubbed Nam June Pike installation in the style of Edward Packer. 1965-1973-1980. Magnetic tape, handheld tape, playback head, speaker system, voice of the artist, Computer Synthesized Speech. Oh, I read about this one. It's interactive. What's it about? It's an installation by a different artist made of audio tape, and then she took it and recorded over all the tape with her own sounds. You can listen to it by running this tape playback head around on it. Let's try it out. I think you start in the middle. As Bob drags the playback head along the tape, a woman's voice issues unsteadily from the speakers. We start in the middle. Donald and Joseph are in the hallway. I am in an office. The walls are lined with filing cabinets. A few drawers hang open. The door is ajar. A massive computer looms in the corner. There are some punch cards on the floor. A synthetic voice recording spliced awkwardly into the tape lists out options in monotone. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. To examine cards, rotate 30 degrees and advance 7 inches. To leave room, rotate 17 degrees and advance 4 inches. To activate computer, rotate 200 degrees and advance 15 inches. So I guess all of those people... Because... Because we know uh, Joseph Wheattree's work is all uh, multiple choice. Uh, it seems like Lula's was too, just in different ways. I look forward to seeing how Donald does it. And also, these people, I think they're the in game version of the Bed Quilt Ramblers, if that wasn't clear. Or, yeah, I think so, because they're also the, the board game players. So this is what they do when they're not hanging out in gas station basements. Uh, let's see. Exam cards. Encoded in the holes punched through these cards is a first draft of the poetic subsystem. I can't read punch cards by sight. Donald can, I think. Anyway, this version was pretty underwhelming. Hmm. Activate computer. So loud. I love it. I am now holding two punch cards. On one of them, Joseph has scribbled a note. Caves. The other is blank. Let's see. Try out caves first. We're on a dirt trail in the park. Or, well, it's not really a trail. It's a trail. It's more like a tendency. There tend to be fewer plants here on the path we've been walking. <laughs> walking sounds. Now we're walking at the edge of a massive hole. 
The dirt gives way to mossy rock as the ground sinks into darkness. Joseph and Donald are following a rope down into the cave. They have computer equipment tied to their backs. So do I. That's the only choice to enter the cave. Yeah, that's the end of that one. So, 65 degrees, 4 inches. That's the last trip. So everything's down here now. The final resting place. Don't be so morbid. To remember a fond gesture. <laughs> Rotate 180 degrees and advance 23 inches. To regret a harsh word. Rotate 12 degrees and advance 6 inches. Huh. Easier to get to a harsh word than a fond gesture. Um, well, press F to pay respects. It's morning now. I'm in the car. I'm driving to work. This is the last recording I'll make on this tape. And then I'll drop it in the mail tomorrow. And then who knows? I've been recording on this tape for... 15 years, I think? A lot of other things happened. So, here's a story. When I met Donald and Joseph, they were both students, and I was in a band performing on campus. They came to my show, and then we met at some bar and had a few drinks together. Joseph wanted to impress me, so he stole a metal cocktail tumbler and gave it to me. We got kicked out, wandered drunkenly until morning, and finally ended up at a diner. And now I use the tumbler to store extra pens on my desk. So, I'm almost out of tape. I guess I'll... I'll just let it run out while I drive. Hmm. No instructions? No, that's the end of this tape strip. I don't think we ever reached this long one at the top here. Is it cheating to skip over there? <laughs> I won't tell a soul. Donald, distant. Think of our work, our research. You'll die in these damn cold caves. And what about those men? You know they'll come back. We'll go deeper, that's all. They'll never find us. Did you hear their voices? They're not... They'll find you, but not me. I'm going back to the surface. Stop! Your stupid fight is ringing through the whole damn cave. Joseph is right. We can't stay here. I'm leaving too, but I'm not going back to the surface. I'm taking my station wagon, and I'm heading down the zero. Ooh. You'll be lost forever. But we need your voice for the me for the machine, Lula. It only recognizes your voice. I'll send you this tape when I'm done recording. I'll put it in the mail, and then you can see what your damn machine does with it. Oh. That's interesting. I think I've seen something like that before. You just sort of trace along the tracks. I'm hoping I can reactivate and see something else, but I think that might be... Yeah. It looks like that's all, all you can get. Well, that was very interesting. So... Joseph, Donald, and Lula were making some sort of machine with computers and they built it in a cave and then some people are trying to stop them I guess and there was a love polygon basement puzzle two number two artist sunset and horse 1976 plaster and wire what do you think she means by puzzle I hope it's not sad. What do you think she means by puzzle? Yeah, weird. I guess it's something you can solve? They must be symbols. Artist, sunset, horse. Or it's an anagram? Or like a code? 
or it's just a misdirection. Maybe it's a puzzle, but there's no right answer. That is kind of sad. Oh, man. That's one of the things that always happens with these. I want to I want to read more, but it requires restarting and rebooting apparently. Man, I really don't like that noise. I just want to do a quick run through to see if there's anything I miss. other times it's a barn. Okay, so it looks like I can't uh, interact with anything else anymore, so I'm going to hit the exit. That's definitely intriguing. It makes me want to know more what they were building in the, the caves. is limits and demonstrations. We see some of Lula Chamberlain's work over the decades. It's sort of sad just hearing about how a lot of these exhibits didn't come out right the first time. They took several years to make and then uh, problems occurred and, and it's like later exhibits got it right maybe but that's a lot of love and effort you put into something and then it fails you lose you lose out on a, making the dream a reality I guess so yeah that was Limits and Demonstrations next time it's Act 2 so I'll see you there and then